Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. I'm really excited about having today's guests with, with on the show today, Tom and Lisa Kuchara. They are the co-chairman of NECCC. Now that's a mouthful, and they're going to explain to us what it's all about. What is NECCC? So it's the New England Camera Club Council. It's made up of about 70 different camera clubs in the New England region. We have about 7,000 total members in it. It's open to anybody that is passionate about photography. Any photo enthusiast can go to the photography conference. It happens once a year in July up at the UMass Amherst campus. And it's just an immersion weekend. We have different programs. There's different photo opportunities, different um, learning opportunities. And it's just kind of like a big family reunion of photographers every year, but not so exclusive that like new people can't jump in. About 25% of our attendance every year is first time attendees as well. well that, I've gone to this for many, many years. And I understand there's about a thousand people that attend every year. Correct. And if you, the wonderful thing about it is, you're right. You know, a new a newcomer is brought right into the fold. Mm -hmm. There's something for a new. There's a program for newcomers. What is that called? Yeah. So there's a first timer um, like orientation. Um, Antoinette Gambita does it. She does a wonderful job. She pulls out the schedule and can be a little overwhelming because there's so many things to choose from. And she kind of gets them how to navigate what they're interested in, what programs they should see, what photo opportunities they should bring their camera to, how to know to get up early Sunday morning because we have a big event on Sunday Wonderful morning. Wonderful event. Yeah. You see, it's, it's so well run, it's so well organized, and you two are the co-chair this year, and next year, I believe, is correct, that correct? Correct, yes. And of most of the people that attend are belong to a camera club, but you don't have to belong you to a You do not have to belong to a camera club. So I would say maybe a third of the people who come are just photo enthusiasts. We have professionals mm -hmm. that come, we have just somebody that has bought a camera and kind of started taking pictures and enjoyed it more and has heard about the conference and wants to attend the conference. It really is exciting. It really is. And I, I hate to admit this on TV. However, I'm usually so tired by the mid-afternoon on Saturday, I have to take a nap before I continue on. I just go back. <laughs> Do, don't tell anybody that. That's our secret. I just take a little, little nap. But it is one. It is an absolutely wonderful uh, event. Now let's talk about the people who give the programs. I understand the photographers come from all over the country. Yeah, so we have um, about 35 speakers from all over the country. Most of them, um, this is their first time presenting at NECCC, so there's a lot of, um, there's a few people that are really popular and come back, but there's a lot of big names that we're getting from different parts of the country. So they come in, they do a program, a lot of them also do a hands-on activity. This year for the first time we have photo walks, so mm -hmm. we're excited that people are actually going to be walking around with their camera, or their iPhone now, or smartphone, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. taking pictures that way. And they, these are, are these guided photos? Photo walks? Yes, guided photo walks by the speakers. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, let's look a little bit of some of the work. Now, the first image that we're going to have on the monitor that comes up is just an overview, and those are all the speakers that are there. And that, those are the dates of it. Um, now, if people want to find this on the, on the internet, what do they Google? NECCC? Yeah, NECCC.org. Okay, and then all the information will come up. Mm -hmm. Now, the mm -hmm. first photograph we're going to see is from Hector Astoria. Astoria. What kind of photographer is Ooh. What kind of photographer is he? He's a wildlife photographer from Texas. He travels all around the world. He does a lot of uh, photography uh, workshops to Africa. He's gone to Honduras. He has uh, done, gone to um, a lot of the Caribbean islands in Cuba. He speaks Spanish and he does run a, uh, a ranch you know, as a manager. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell you that picture of his it it's almost stunning. Stunning. stunning because it looks like and I know it didn't happen mm -hmm. but it looks like a portrait of this mm -hmm. animal and I know how hard it is to to corral a dog to get him to, to <laughs> yeah. do that yeah. but that is absolutely phenomenal mm -hmm. he's one of the speakers do you remember what his topic is He's got three different things he's presenting. Mm -hmm. One is how to take better nature pictures. That's a pre-conference. Right? Um, That's the pre-conference. Well, no, the pre-conference is how to edit your yes, pictures. So the pre-conference is uh, 10 yes. minute or less editing. So mm -hmm. people don't necessarily want to spend a long time in the back of the, you know, front of the computer. So he's going to, in three hours, do hands-on of how to quickly improve your photographs with a little bit of post-processing mm -hmm. and easy post-processing. Then he's got a one-hour program that he's giving twice on nature photography. 
And then he's got one on how to win photography contests. He's won all kinds of contests, um, nature photography, mm -hmm. um, worldwide uh, nature, other types of photography contests. So he's going to kind of give his little tips of what to enter and how to win some of these contests. And not only is he talented, but he's a really nice man as well. I, so that I, makes a good teacher. It is. I already feel my nap is gonna, not going to take place on Saturday. <laughs> now, the next picture we have is by Bobby Lane. It's portraiture. Is that correct that we're going to be all? Oh, no, we actually have two more pictures two by more Hector. Pictures. Oh, this is oh, Hector this again. Is Hector again. Oh, my God. And the next picture for Hector is coming up. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, we have one more by Hector. One more by Hector coming up on the in, on the monitor. He does a lot of bird photography. He does a lot of like hummingbirds, yeah. and I would. Um, he does like the South Texas ranches. He's part mm -hmm. um, owner of one of the ranches, so you can actually come down there. And in Texas, water is a premium, so they put the water out there so that the birds will be attracted as a natural way of being able to photograph. Have the you birds. ever been down to his ranch? No, but we're mm -hmm. planning on it. And it, very interestingly, one of our speakers for our camera club in New Haven had mentioned this wonderful ranch, and afterward, I went up and got his information. And the next day, on my list of people to call was Hector so it was kind of like this perfect storm oh, so, <laughs> so I'm, I might he must be having something that so on the next picture we still have one more picture, picture by Hector yeah. that's coming up and um, okay but I understand there might be a problem in the we don't have a picture so we're gonna go on to portraiture from Bobby Lane now who is Bobby Lane Bobby Lane's a portrait artist from Massachusetts she, she's world-renowned. Bobby's a woman. Uh, yep, Bobby's a Bobby's woman. Bobby's a woman. She's a she's very energetic very, woman. Very, <laughs> very energetic. She's, uh, she's been to NECCC before. You know, we, we asked her to do a pre-conference to photograph uh, character models mm -hmm. and show people how. A lot of uh, photographers, amateur photographers, are afraid to photograph people. So she has a very nice way, very engaging way, uh, infectious way of photographing people and getting natural looks. So here we have Bobby's work. Now, you're absolutely right. People, I happen to love photographing people, mm -hmm. but a, a lot of people have a resistance to going up yes. and, and shooting. And the image on the right is, is your example of a character model. And one of the reasons we, we did uh, bring characters in to the NECCC for the first year is not to compete against the regular models, but to get photographers who are not comfortable photographing people to photograph cosplay characters or people dressed up in yes, costumes who, yes, who yes. normally naturally will pose in a way that they know how to pose. So there's less direction from the photographer that you have to give. Yes, and, yes, that makes a lot more of sense. It can be more engaging. That you makes know. sense. So. Now, in their next image, I understand mm -hmm. we're going to have an image by Ella Carlson. Now, who is, is this Bobby or Ella? This is Ella's. So Ella wow. is a professional photographer. She has won all kinds of uh, awards through the Professional Photography Association, PPA, and she's got a wonderful imagination. So these kind of started out just as these really simple mirrored little planets, and then they've evolved into, she calls them aliens, and she has had gallery exhibitions. And Are these real people? No, these are her imagination. This is something she has concocted and she has warped them and masterly crafted them into these alien looking creatures. And she, uh, she just won um, an award for an album of all of these, these aliens. Wow, mm. I've, never, I've never seen anything like this. Ever. So her pre-conference workshop is going to be involving doing a little bit of this kind of more advanced Photoshop. So most of the other uh, workshops and programs are geared toward beginners or intermediate, but we want something for all different levels. Well, I hate to say this, but I've already signed up for a pre-conference on water drops, and I was really excited to do it. But I would love to be in the uh, like several of these. Okay, fine. Now, I understand um, the next is photo travel with Ira Block. No, nope, wait, one more by Ella. Oh, one more by Ella. Yep. So and, uh, by this Ella's is the cover of Ella's book. So she just wrote a book about fine art photography. Now this looks and very traditional. Yep. It traditional, doesn't look like. But it's the lighting that really makes the image. So the lighting brings out every single petal and every fold and every shadow and every highlight. And she has a wonderful book uh, by Amherst Media. And she kind of walks through some of the examples of how she approaches things. And some of them are dead flowers. They're not all in pristine condition.
Very, very interesting. You know, when I look at these photos, um, it's so motivating. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's like, you know, my I live for photography. I You actually do, and I do a couple <laughs> other things, but oh my God, is that motivating. So then Ira now is, Ira Block is the photo traveler. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so he has, how many images do we have of his? I think we have two images. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, now this is... Ira is a people person. It looks like that was taken out in the Middle East. Okay, I was in Morocco okay. recently, yeah. uh, and actually sure. it could he have been taken there. Say, but he's a very, very wonderful man. He's a Sony Sony uh, shooter, uh, mirrorless. Sony artisan, artisan, so like a professional person. Mm -hmm. He is, he's, he's traveled the world, and he, he's does well, beautiful work. He's willing to share everything. Like yeah. we had come across him and he had just been to Cuba and we were on our way to Cuba and we called him up and we talked to him for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So he's very willing to share what he knows and to help other people as well. Well, and the interesting thing is I think a lot of people when they take photos, they think they need to take the background of the camels and whatnot. But having that um, gentleman in the front of it, it just gives a perspective. It creates layers. Layers. When you do photography, the, you know, these guys who know what they're doing, Look for layers in their photographs. Oh, is that the secret? Let me write that down. Look for layers. <laughs> layers. Not Photoshop layers. Okay, layers. layers. I might be able layers. to do that. So we have another image from Ira. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if he bit the dust. Wow. <laughs> now that's a phenomenal picture. Yes. Now this is, this is a, was this a trick writer that was doing this, or was this intentional? Or not intentional? That looks intentional, where he was planning something, or it was something out in uh, maybe in you know out east you know that it was a sport yes, or something yes, like that yes. you know and this is the way the gentleman was hanging off yes you know maybe he had to reach low now you mentioned um, there's a lot of hands-on at this uh, conference could you go into that a little bit more what the hands-on aspect of it is we're shooting digital mm -hmm. you're at a conference the philosophy is to shoot you want to shoot, you want to experience, you want to make mistakes, but you're really not. They're learning. You're learning photography, you're learning exposures, you're learning, and you're there with other people to question, and you, you get engaged. And when I mean, you think about it, you're smarter as a group than you are as an individual. Absolutely. So when you're with people, you tend to rise to the occasion. Yes. And you, you tend to experience and experiment, experiment more and take more risks than you would by yourself. Mm -hmm. And digital is a wonderful medium to be shooting, so there's no reason for us not to shoot right. so and the, be an adrenaline shooter. Yeah. So the presenters know. are there to um, inspire, but then we want people to take what yeah. they've been inspired and apply it right away yeah. during some of these photo walks. Yeah. And I think, like you said, shoot, that's important. People say, what's the number one thing I can do to improve my photography? I said, take more pictures. Mm -hmm. That's really the number one thing that we can do. So like Ira's doing a photo walk, and mm -hmm. he's just going to kind of walk around campus and kind of talk about what he does when he is in you know, this part of the, the world or a different part of the world and just kind of lead people around and kind of get a chance to peek into his brain a little bit. What a fabulous opportunity. Yeah. And you're also right because um, one reason why it's kind of tiring is you're sitting all day in the workshops and or the lectures and you're not moving that much. Yeah. But I think you're absolutely right. Now there's also there's also salons or rooms that are set up for activity. How do how do people get hands on not doing a photo shoot, but they, they go into separate rooms, model rooms. So there's rooms. model rooms where there's uh, female models that are available with various different setups, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the lighting is all taken care of. There's also small mammals, there's gonna be water drops, there's gonna be black light photography. So you get to go in and kind of play with something that maybe you don't normally photograph. Or have and, the setup at home. Yeah, or have the setup at home, yeah. exactly. Yes, yes, and so bring your tripod. Yes, bring your tripod, I, I just bring listened your to your yeah. advice about something. It took me a little while. But I, I ended up buying a couple of weeks ago that uh, head for my tripod. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Oh, Ar my God. Ar 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 
Yeah. Oh, my God. I had that other head for hundreds of years, and I, it, no wonder I hated my tripod. Yes. <laughs> yep. My yep. tripod and I are developing a relationship, yep. and it's a good one. It's becoming, <laughs> and it gets better the more I use it. Okay. Now, Tom, uh, you talked about um, some of the characters in the photo walks. Now, I also understand there's lens borrowing. Yes, uh, Lens Baby, Canon, and Nikon, and Tamron Sigma will all loan out lenses mm -hmm. to uh, the, the, or the or cameras to the uh, to to our participants. And and the purpose of that is obviously it's sales; they want to sell, but to try something new and to experience it rather than just walking in the store and just turning around at, at the counter and taking pictures or something. Like now you can, you can just walk <laughs> yes, around yes. for a few hours and photograph yes. and, and see if you like it or not. Yes, yes. I did that a couple of years ago with mm -hmm. a lens. Yeah. I thought I really wanted this expensive lens and it was so heavy. I, I did all the paperwork yeah. to, to borrow the yeah. lens and I went to pick up the lens I said, I'm not taking it. <laughs> when, you, when you read the specs on a lens and it says two pounds, three pounds, we normally don't think about that. No, you but when don't. when you pick it up on a camera yeah. body, you're maybe, maybe five pounds, six pounds total. Yeah. And you're holding that all day long. That, that can be daunting, but there's a price to pay, you know, and, and you, you being a discerning photographer will look at the equipment and to get the best picture you can get. Yes, you yes. Know, so you do sacrifice something. So there's so yeah. much that yes. they're doing. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to see another picture that we're going to be looking at. Um, now I mm -hmm. not sure. This might be Don Kamarechka's and he is an amazing photographer for both ultraviolet light and for snowflakes. So he's really known for his snowflakes. You know, there's a saying that you know, no snowflake is alike. Well, he has literally thousands and thousands. Is this of, a real snowflake? That's a real snowflakes. He lives in Canada, and he photographs snowflakes. He's actually bringing some snowflakes that are, I want to say, like petrified to the conference for people to photograph. I don't know exactly how you keep a snowflake petrified, but he does. Mm, and he good. did a project this year of 365 snowflakes. So he wanted to be able to kind of do like a snowflake a day kind of a thing and be able to show how different all of those are. Oh my God. And the bleeding hearts on the right is black light? This is ultraviolet light. So the plants actually emit this ultraviolet light. So you need a special light on your, mm. um, you know, in the front of your lens and the Colors sometimes are so different, greens and purples and bright, bright colors. And this must be what's attracting the pollinators, all of our bees and our bats and our birds that come over. And th that's the only reason I can think of why you'd have this ultraviolet coloration in our in our flowers. He could probably tell you better. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That really. Now, you were saying that he he's a professional photographer. Correct. Mm -hmm. Wow. From yeah. Canada. And you said that uh, he put on some places Facebook and he had 90 thousand hits on that? Yes, so he yeah. just recently posted one of the ultraviolet flower pictures and he had 90,000 hits on social media for that one picture. Yes. Wow, well let's put his name out there and get 90,000 hits. So what it, does he have, do we have another photo from him? We might or? have one more, I'm not we sure. Okay, no, um, Rob just said we don't. Okay. So going on to the next particular photo, um, that we brought in. Do you remember who that is? This is some of the hands-on opportunities. I, I want to remember talk about. him. <laughs> at the I, yes, I remember. I didn't know it at the time when I was there. I hate to tell you. He this. didn't give his name out that often. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him. Now describe the setup for us for a little bit. So this, this is, is a grass constant on? light setup, so it's um, lights where you don't have to worry about flash and technical type of things. So you can just go in with your camera. You don't need a tripod for this. You don't have to wait in line because multiple people can be photographing him at the same time. They bring in very natural looking backgrounds, so with none of this that he looks he looks like he could be sitting out on your front lawn or something like that. Mm -hmm. If we had hedge eggs, our front lawn. Now, do they, I have to ask you: Do they have? Does is the is the are the is the fur as prickly as it looks? It's very prickly. I actually wanted a pet hedgehog because they're nocturnal and like I'm up a lot at night, so I thought it'd be a perfect pet. <laughs> and they're they're a little hard to handle. I'm looking at your husband. He's shaking his head. Okay, Lisa. All right. And the next and the next image that we're going to see on here. This is also from Photo Ops. This is one of the ones that's going to be there this year. Um, Chris is one of the people in charge of Photo. Ops and 
she's actually doing this type of glassware backlighting black light setup where you get the outlines of all of the the glassware in there and you can come and make your own arrangement and learn how to do some of this and that's something that in our new england area can be fun to do in the winter so sometimes you get inspired there and now you know something you can do on one of those cold weekends when you don't want to venture out of the house now interestingly i don't think i would have thought of using clear glass i would have thought you had to have colored glass mm -hmm. but that's very very interesting mm -hmm. very interesting yeah and then i think there's one more photo op okay there's one, one more. more up there mm -hmm. oh now this is this is at the um, site of the conference is at Amherst, mm -hmm. and this is Amherst, and this was a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, 2000, where 2016, they, I think, or And 15. they brought in... The, uh, the Revolutionary Guards. Yes. You know, yes. Con the, on the, the British. So every, Tories, yeah. every year on Sunday, yeah. we have a, a particular photo event. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Hunt's Photo sponsors us to be able to bring something in. This year, we're bringing in 10 old cars, so they've all been restored. And we're going to be able to have them out on the lawn and be able to photograph these old, wonderful character cars. Oh, how exciting is that? How exciting. The University of Massachusetts is a wonderful, wonderful venue for yeah. this. and. It takes place over several of the buildings, and there's always someone there to help you and guide you and where to go. But they have this wonderful area, green area by the pond, and that's where all that takes place. I remember we've had um, balloons, we've had motorcycles, mm -hmm. we've had bikers. Yep. Yep. Motocross. Yes. Motocross. Yep. What, are, what are some other people that have been there? I'm trying to remember some of the other things. There's always We've something had going on. Horses and, and parachute. Had, yeah, and parachute. parachutes. Yeah. Parachutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So this so year. So you also mentioned the, uh, the helpers. So, so the, the, the red shirts are phenomenal. So if you're up there and you're not exactly sure where to go and you're a beginner and you're, you're there for the first time, all the equipment people are there in red shirts. So they're there to help the speakers, they're there to set up, and they're also there to help all the participants. So if they have any questions, they know immediately they can go to somebody in a red shirt and they'll help them. Yeah, you're, I'm glad you mentioned that. The red shirts. But if you ask anybody, oh, absolutely, oh, anybody, absolutely. anybody, yeah. you know, yeah. except yeah. maybe me, I'll steer you in the wrong direction. <laughs> but we speak at a lot of conferences, and they're all good conferences. But the level of detail and attention to detail of this conference for help for speakers and help for the participants is is really first class. Now, Tom, what happens Saturday night? <coughs> Excuse me. Saturday night is the keynote speaker, and this year is the Canon Explorer of Light, Daryl Gulan. Daryl Gulan is a world-renowned traveler. He's going to talk about his travels to seven continents. And he's a wonderful photographer. He's a wonderful man. He is doing a pre-conference workshop. And now <coughs> the pre-conference, too, because yep. his Saturday night is on yep. the seven continents. His pre-conference is yep. on his backyard. Oh, and 30% yes. of his sales, he's a professional photographer, 30% of his yep. sales come from his backyard. And so people kind of think they have to travel far and wide in order to get a great picture. And he's there to tell people how to get great yep. pictures without having to travel far and wide and then complimenting that. Where, what mm -hmm. state does he live in? Do you know? Washington? I think Washington. Yeah. I think okay. Washington. <laughs> oh, I was just curious. You know, he doesn't live in a condo, but you know. <laughs> but that's that really is interesting that a lot of his sales yeah do come from that and uh, Saturday night it's really funny because yeah. I probably shouldn't tell this there's everybody has been on the go for two days a day and a half <laughs> and they've had dinner and they go and they sit there it's eight o'clock I think it starts or seven o'clock mm -hmm. the lights come down low and you want to sleep and everybody there's a, half the audience is asleep you want to stay awake you want to see it but, but that's where we pick the best speaker for that, though. We bring in a Canon or a Nikon Explorer of Light so that they're really energetic. They can't just be an average speaker. They're kind of asked as kind of a lifetime achievement to do the Saturday night and also because they're really energetic. We had, um, who was, um, Bob, uh, I want to say Goral, but I'm messing up his name. Um, well, there was, there was a anyway. guy from Kodak yes. who used to run down the uh, aisle, yep. <laughs> and I miss him. I can't remember his name, but he yep. it was like, you know, you, he, that's how he came, got on stage. He goes yep. running yep. down the aisle. Yep. So, so there's was, a lot of, we want people that are energetic because we know that people might have a yep. tendency to want to snooze a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, we're, there's an older crowd there, but it's not just an older group that goes. You have yeah. all age We have college levels. students' yeah. levels. We have a high school where there's uh, scholarships given to high school students, and they attend the conference. Um, it's all different age levels. And I know our camera club, uh, the New Haven Camera Club, 
has sponsored um, people who have never been before mm -hmm. so that they can enjoy it. Um, so this is not just for advanced photographers. This is for everyone. For everybody. everybody. And it's also a nice place for couples and families to go. You know, yeah. children. Of, it's, it's just a, a really great weekend. The nice thing is there's no obligation to go to any of the programs. You can, photo sh you can shoot all day long. There's something for everybody. You can spend a little money at the, at the vendors if you choose to. So, you know, we want you to go see the, uh, the speakers. We want you to, you know, go to photo ops. But there's no it's, obligation. You know what? You bring up a good point. Yeah. It's total choice. Total and you choice. also, the University of Massachusetts has revamped their uh, campus center. And yeah. it's like a food court. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's very and it's like right a now. delicious food yes. court. So, I our, mean, you know, it's our, really, really good. Our goal is is to s look to the future for NECCC and to get a l more younger people to come. So I think by doing these walkabouts and, and doing a lot of photography, getting younger speakers and, and middle-aged speakers, it, I think it's something that we, we're, we'd like to keep working on. Yeah, and you have to replenish you have to replenish yeah. the group. Yeah. We we don't have that much time left. So mm -hmm. um, could you, Lisa, give us the contact information for NECCC? So it's www.neccc, New England Camber Club Council, neccc.org. So just www.neccc.org. And then once you go on to it, the main page has a link to the conference has a page for registration. It has a 84 page PDF if you want to know about each individual speaker. It has the pre-conference workshops, the photo shoots. It's got a little bit of information that you can look about. And while you were talking, I just remembered that, you know, I stay overnight, but if people don't want to uh, incur the cost of a hotel, what can they do? So there are dorms on campus. Dorms. There's two different sets of dorms. One is the newer dorms, the north dorms. So that's encouraging people to register early because there's only um, a certain number of them. They're very, very modern. They have air conditioning. They have very comfortable. Um, so, or some people choose to be a little bit, they, the dorms aren't expensive either way, but if you want the older dorms are a little bit cheaper as well. And it's not a lot of money for the conference or for the um, the dorm, so no. you could go there very inexpensively and learn a lot and with you could 25 just go, hours. Yeah, you could just go for a Saturday if you, you want. You can just go for a one but day But I as highly well. recommend that you would be significantly depressed if you just go for one day. Yes. You, you, really, you really need to, mm -hmm. how often do you have the chance to immerse yourself? It's 25 so, hours of complete immersion into photography, and a lot of people, when they leave, they're just like, oh my God, like I, I get so many ideas, I wanna quit my job, or I want to go to a place and improve my photography. What's the website again? www.neccc.org. Thank you, Lisa and Tom, for being on the program. Mm, thank you. With very valuable you. information. Personally, I wish I could go tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.